Hello and welcome to Perspectives, Ramadan's special show. And tonight is a very special night. Ekish Ramadan, 21st Ramadan, my apologies. Um, the beginning of what we call the Taq Rati. The beginning of where you start searching for Shabda Qadr, the night of power, the great night. This is the night, this is the week, these are 10 days of Ramadan, where the praying, the introspection, the asking for forgiveness, the asking for God's mercy, the asking for God's bounty, is at its max because Allah Ta'ala wanted it to be that. But today marks a great sacrifice, a great witness. Yom Ali, the Shahada of Hazrat Ali al-Hazrat It is not a simple incident in the history of Islam. It is, if I may use the word, a very complicated incident. Not because of its being complicated, but because of the endless meanings and depth in the life of Hazrat Ali al-Islam and this incident. And it deserves a great discussion and understanding of what this is all about. So tonight, we would like uh, to touch this topic and also maybe briefly try to understand where does Ramadan take us from here. My guests on my right, a uh, great honor once again, uh, Mukti Ehsan Waqar Ahmad Thank you very much for being here. An educationist, actually, an expert in Islamic finance. But today, uh, my friend here is going to help us understand philosophy and concepts of Islam. And another the reason I said he's an educationist, my other guest is also a very dear friend and an educationist. Uh, the man behind Teachers Resource Center, TRC, Mr. Abbas, thank you very much. Teachers Development. Teachers Development, my apologies. Teachers Development, not TRC, my apologies. Thank you very much for being here. Okay, I'd like to start with you. The significance of today, the significance of Hazrat Ali al Islam Shahadat, and also his role and service for Islam. Please. I would like to start off with Hazrat Ali's basic, one of the great adjectives associated with him. Uh, at a very young age, uh, around at 20 years, he was deputed as the governor of Yemen. Mm-hmm. And uh, while he was being deputed, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, <coughs> while I'll be serving there as the governor, I would be deciding upon cases put in front of me. So how, I mean, I don't find myself in a position to uh, make judgments. And I'm very afraid of making any wrong judgments. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just uh, gave a tap on his chest and he prayed that whatever you would say and whatever you would decide would be the right. So this is one of the significant. And this was later uh, felt throughout the companions of the Prophet. Everyone would use to, uh, evidence and would always uh, second this, that Hazrat Ali's decision and his judgment was very uh, balanced in all in all aspects and uh, that was very uh, renowned and was very uh, common in that area any difficult judgment which required a lot of uh, thought process was uh, very well addressed by his attorney he had the he, he had, had the that he, he had the, the critical uh, <coughs> analysis uh, skills you could say but in question <coughs> On his way to prayers, picking up from uh, Mufti sir, on his way to the mosque, a Jew stopped him and said, please give me a list of all creatures which are mammals and all which are birds. How do we make a distinction between mammals and birds? And the Mala said, those which have ears on the outside are mammals. And those which have invisible ears are birds. One sentence. We just continued walking. Uh, the other person, I thought he would now get a, regard him with a huge list of things. His command over wisdom, as he very notably said by the Prophet, that I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. The point being, that his relationship to the wisdom of the Prophet, his relationship to the wisdom of Islam, the meaning of the Quran, the understanding of the Quran, his ability to put things in extremely terse and brief uh, ways was something acknowledged by all companions, was something acknowledged by everyone. 
a recent uh, biographer of the Prophet, uh, of Islam rather, Guy Eaton, mm-hmm. in his book, makes a very fine remark. He says that there was something about, something otherworldly about Hazrat Ali. That while he was dealing with matters of state, even at that time he was a deep contemplator and somebody given to this world much less than the other world. And this made people uh, surprised that at his, if you say, uh, if you like, his variations or his value system and, and, and the tilt in his judgment. But uh, I think I'll, I'll lever on that if you ask me your next question. That You said the word contemplator. Hmm. And I made a note of that. And Mufti Sahib and I was, were talking earlier before the show started that the acceptance of guilt and the repentance. And Hazrat Ali and Islam hmm. were mentioning one instance hmm. where he used to repent oh, yeah. deeply. And the contemplation of life and your own self. Please talk about that introspection and the contemplation. What okay. I would like. Basmi, they start with you. Okay. Uh, the collection of his uh, sermons, letters and sayings, uh, available in English translation as Najil Balaga, Peak of Eloquence, available in very many translations. There is much talk about authenticity, not of the whole book, but of parts of it. There is another time to get into all that. Certainly, uh, when a great scholar is around, people find it easy to attribute things. It's a more uh, literary issue. But of the sermons regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the sermons regarding Allah's attributes, of the sermons regarding the ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interacts with the world, some of that wisdom later taken by philosophers and elaborated upon and explained are a kind of a metaphysical gift to humanity. And today one would be like, uh, it's like a feast of riches to read those sermons read the commentaries on those sermons and then figure out where the masters have taken it from those, from those very, very terse references. Another huge point about contemplation would be his incredible dua, dua kumail and dua sabha. Mm-hmm. Two things which very many people read every Thursday night and behind it a lot of work out. They, there, the attributes of Allah with which a servant approaches, a penitent, repentant, um, servant approaches Allah. What are the modes of courtesy with which you approach Allah? What are the appropriate ways of seeking forgiveness? These are the kinds of things which the Muslim Ummah, those who read these prayers, are extremely grateful for. For Hazrat Ali to have provided the terminology, the words with which to do. And, sh- and, and a lot of them are what uh, attributed to him this to quote, they're so thought provoking, so mm-hmm. deep. Mm-hmm. Sir, about his contemplation and... Uh, as I just quoted one of his incidents that described him <coughs> being among the Ashra and Obashra, those who were awarded with the uh, blessings and with the tidings of being the companions in Jannah. Uh, and uh, the Prophet also declared that his house and his uh, house would be just in front of my house, Hazrat Ali. Uh, despite of all these tidings and all these uh, what you could say, the great news is, even then, the, the, the repentance, the status of uh, self-accountability. I mean, even, even though he knew he's forgiven and he's mm-hmm. chosen. chosen. Mm-hmm. Even then, even then, <clears throat> uh, what, what is quoted about him that uh, after midnight, when he used to get up for tahajjud and do his prayers, the way he used to repent and the way he used to cry in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking forgiveness as if he was bitten by a snake who was terribly uh, in great pain and could not uh, sustain the, 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 the pain of that bite. He used to act in such a manner, he used to rub his beard, and he used to cry so loudly that what is going to happen with you on the day of judgment? Despite of the fact that he was the chosen one, mm-hmm. there was the blessing. There was a tiling for him already available, and that was very much uh, uttered by the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, I want to come to that in a moment. I want to apply that to where we stand today, because we, I, today believe that everything that happens in the world is because of somebody else. Everything that happens to me is because of somebody else. I have done nothing, and I am, uh-huh. you know, I'm, I have a clean say. But I'll come to that in a moment. <clears throat> when we talk about the Shahadat, 
I would like you to just quickly touch the meaning of Shahada. And this particular Shahada is taken with great learning and respect. Please shed light on that. <clears throat> the word Shahada is one of the central duties of being a Muslim. Hmm. Um, Surah Nisha verse 135. O ye who believe, be steadfast as witnesses unto Allah in the name of justice, in the name of Allah. Even if you have to go against yourselves, your parents, your kindred, rich or poor. I mean, it's, sort of, it's amazing how, you know, it's like wiping out. That justice is a greater value for you to stand in witness than anything. And now, from that witnessing, uh, W-I-T, you have to add H, W-I-T-H, witness. So that's where the word witness comes from. Okay. <laughs> So, with itness, being with. So, you cannot possibly witness something if you are not with Fair that point. value, that truth, that reality, that haqiqa, that haq. If you're not part of it, if you're not, uh, if, 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 if you haven't connected to it, you can't bear witness to it. If the azan that we recite, even if individually in prayers or aloud, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, and if we say ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, if we say these two. I bear witness. I okay. bear witness. The whole point is, is this witnessing things that you heard someone tell you? Or is this witnessing yourself? There lies the crunch. So your point about bringing it here is that our own witnessing is so, shall we say, false. It's false. We are not ourselves witness to the Tawheed. We are ourselves Distributed, cut, dissipated, divided, deviated. Standing on a weak footing, <laughs> may I say. <laughs> Very weak footing. If that is our case for the unity, the all-encompassing unity of Allah, from there the technical term is unicity. From there you get the word ahadiyat and the text of somewhere else. And then from there to understand the majesty and the glory of the Prophet. Ashadonna Muhammad Rasulullah, if you get this. So if those two witnesses are seriously shaken, you can imagine we have a long way to go. <laughs> The Let's whole point is to deepen. But to <clears throat> to come to the great shahadat we are discussing, why Hazrat Ali shahadat has so much meaning is that here was one who in his life and who in his passing gave the most glorious witness to the oneness of Allah and the messengership of Allah. And thus, thus his tacha, his shahadat has value. For he was the one who did it for the sake of these two great shahadat. So what would you add? So, and uh, that goes mm, uh, for all the shahadat I say, right starting from Hazrat Hamza, Hamza. and uh, then you descend down and you see what happened with Jange Badr and Ghazwai Ahad, all the places. The shahadat was as the, the realization where you start realizing and uh, you accept the basic uh, phenomena, the teachings of Islam, the Wahadaniya and the Risala, these two things. And then you start realizing and you reach a level which becomes so apparent in front of you that you don't feel any, uh, you don't shy away even sacrificing your life. That is what, what, what the climax ends in. Uh, when you perform a Shahada, a shaheed is basically a witness. So he has attained that status of uh, Wahdaniya, the realization of Wahdaniya, and the, uh, the, uh, the understanding of prophecy, that he has sacrificed his life for that cause. He, he's given witness with his own life. Life. That's which is the ultimate. Which is the ultimate. ultimate. That's it. See, you can't claim to have died for something if you haven't lived for it. Okay. Mm. Fair. So that would be that's like a, a, a continuation of your time. Okay. Um, let's talk about Dr. Amir Mazo. Hazrat Ali al Islam's um, uh, impact on the history of Islam uh, with his life and with his end. How is he impacted? One way of seeing, if we were to <clears throat> look at the way Islam unfolds, one way is to look at four, if you like, phases. 
there is the phase of the prophet when he receives uh, the revelation until the migration. That's what we call the Makki, the Makkah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> in that, the role of Islam and the needs of Islam is that Islam is in a minority. Mm-hmm. And falsehood and untruth and idolatry and pagan and all that is in majority. How does one behave in if one is a minority with the truth and the majority has all the power and has all the wealth and all the wealth and everything? How does one deal with it? So we have a lesson in living. Then we have the Madani door, which is the, when, the, when the Hijra takes place, when in time you are a major player in the society and ahead of you are equals and you, you say, all right, we will create a, a federation. You will be judged by what you consider precious and holy, people of the Jews. You will be judged by the Torah. You will be judged by your system and the Muslims will be judged by me, says the Prophet when he arrived, Mishak in Madina, etc. So we have a way by which, how do you deal with the minority when you are in the majority? Okay. Now, Hazrat Ali's life teaches us the way he was following the Prophet and the way Islam itself unfolds. What to do when you are there and what to do when you are there. But then there is a third phase, when the, when the Prophet passes. And we have the caliphs. And here we have Hazrat Ali's role as... The, the companion, as the advisor, as the statesman, the elder statesman, as the one who gives advice at every step, every moment. And this then is, until the death of Hazrat Usman. Here we have him saying, if you happen to be a wise person, then your role is that of cooperation and helping to get the ummah and keep it on its mm-hmm. path. You are the role model, you remain there. Yes, values change, other things happen, some not so very happy things, but then Islam spreads, that has its own tensions, as every place. And then you have the last four and a half years of his life in which he is caliph himself. So what kinds of judgments do you do when you yourself are now able to take the decisions, undo some of the damage, set things right, put things... So we have in these four, if you like, phases of life. Such a marvelous uh, undercurrent, stratum of guidance and wisdom for the Muslim Ummah, that you almost have it all there. Okay, what do you do when you are not in power, but you have the wisdom to do so? You cooperate. What do you do when you are in a minority and you are being pulverized by the people? This is how you manfully, willfully hold it. What do you do when you are in, you wage battle of Badr and Ohad and Khaybar and Khandar? So if you take these as metaphors, one good way of summarizing it would be that. If I, if, unfortunately, uh, I, and I, and I speak only for myself, I speak for nobody else, I have become a ritualist. Everything is a ritual for me. <clears throat> I would talk of the greatness of an event, of an event, I'd learn nothing from it. So, this is another event which I would at then speak of its greatness, but I would not bother to learn something from it. If I was to learn something from Hazrat Ali al-Islam's life, what would be the few things in your memory that I should understand and I should apply to my life today, given where I, as a Pakistani, stand today? Um, I would just like to quote the incident of his shahada that while he was proceeding for Fajr prayers, and it was Abdul Rahman ibn Maljan who was the sister, and uh, he was there in the masjid in Kufa and then Hazrat Ali woke him up and he started doing his prayers. And mm-hmm. while he was performing his prayers, he was stopped and uh, f- which was, he, the, the, the sword was basically, uh, was poisonous which had uh, infected Hazrat Ali and finally he he went and he passed away as a shaheed. <coughs> but while he was injured, he asked the companions that have a uh, g- deal nicely with this suspect and hold him in prison. If I stay alive, then I'm going to uh, make the judgment. Well. And if I pass away, then surely he would be the culprit and he would be subject to death penalty. So even at that time, the the quality of judgment 
and the wisdom was there putting aside all his uh, sentiment putting aside all his uh, uh, other feelings mm-hmm. and even at that moment he is deciding with a lot of judgment a lot of wisdom uh, which reflects uh, how patience which re- reflects how uh, wise he was while making decisions but wisdom can be subjective and yes. one man's wisdom is not necessarily another's True. wisdom so uh, i like you to share the same question but uh, what mufti sahib just said brings me uh, okay. I, need, i need to take a short break but i would like to just comment you said earlier that while giving witness even if you have to fight yourself you fight yourself so this he's injured he's the aggrieved party and yet, and yet. He's, he's fighting him with himself Correct. to bear that witness and to be just let's take a short break we'll take a, a basis uh, view on this and also talk more about hazrat ali islam shahadat peace be with us watching perspectives we um, during the break we got talking i opened a website with um, has at least quotes and i was looking at a few and we got talking about that and one was maine allah ko apne iradon ke tootne se pehchana hai i have i have recognized god by the failure of my intentions breaking of my by the desires. breaking of my desires this Shall is like. one of the one of the <clears throat> if you like classic uh, statements it has on it the the, the stamp of the kind of wisdom that Hazrat Ali was capable of and the kind of insight that he was capable of. Uh, masters who have interpreted this statement say that it has uh, two meanings, two ways of reading it. Uh, yes, the English version that I have is slightly better than <laughs> the one there. Um, indeed, I recognized Allah in the breaking of my desires. This is one word. And uh, I go for this. Mm-hmm. In it is one. um i recognize if things happened the way i wanted them to happen if things happened the way i wanted then i am the one capable of fulfilling my desires okay so in the breaking of my desires shows that there is a being more powerful than me who is able to this is the easy meaning this is the one which it's everyone but there's a deeper meaning <coughs> i wanted to benefit myself by some underhanded way and so were a whole lot of other people who were doing the same thing so i joined them saying fayda ho raha hai na sabko fayda ho raha hai mera bhi ho jayega the will of allah was that i was not to benefit <laughs> so while everyone got what they got whatever underhanded thing they were they doing, benefited <laughs> they said i did not i did not and this then shows me ke even and on a so called sure thing there is a greater power at work which seems to manage to save me from my own clumsiness from my own duplicity from my own crookedness and make me recognize with a moment of repentance and guilt saying idiot <laughs> why did you do that <laughs> you know why why i'm then smiling sitting here yeah, because we had like a 30 minute discussion on this and i was quoting a personal incident okay you must have said earlier that something i said which i shouldn't have said and immediately like within 30 seconds of that i ran into trouble and trouble which i could not get out of for hours okay. and all i kept saying was i shouldn't have said that line so, while somebody else would have gotten away perfectly with that line. i'm not saying i'm i'm, I'm, I'm no no i get it but you just this, this is how god correct so please shed light uh, <clears throat> your relation with god it all depends on the level of connection you have with him the close connections even with inmates 
with your children, those who are very close to it, a slight deviation of order. <laughs> Beautifully said. What? Yeah, you cannot tolerate that. And those who are a little far away, less connected to you, Beautiful. you're least bothered. You're least bothered to it. Let them have enjoy what they're enjoying at the moment. So this is, and the best part is on the person, uh, like here, what Hazrat Ali said, okay, realization. You realize what's happening around you and how God is managing events for you. This is the best part. When things happen, we do say, Khair ho ji. But we don't realize what actually happened. What actually happened. Or what we've done. Or what, what we have done. And later on, it, at times, you come to know about the reality, what would have happened if that decision was uh, executed. The, the, this, this realization, again, I would turn back that this all depends how deeply you're connected. How deeply you're connected. And again, this would always, it's a cycle which would come in your accountability, your remembrance, your repentance, and then you're getting back on track, moving ahead, then you'll fall away again. So this is a cycle which goes on and on. The message is that you have to stay connected. You have to stay connected to that uh, power, to that omnipotence, to that subhanahu wa ta'ala, that reminds you that there is an existence who is always working. I would just like to uh, share a, uh, a verse in Farsi. Kar saze ma basaze kare ma. Kar saze ma basaze kare ma. Fikre ma dar kare ma azare ma. That my Lord, the Rab, is busy making arrangements for me. And my interference in that management would disturb and would bring in more disturbance and distress to myself. Leave the things as it's happening. God will manage it excellently. See the signs and follow them. Mm-hmm. To link that, I will read <coughs> another one. Din ko risk ki talash ko, raat ko uski talash ko, jutumai risk deta hai. By the day, seek bounties and by the night, seek the one who gives you the bounties. Right. Um, is that connection to God. He, without doubt, is one of the one of the few who had the greatest connections to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we learn from that? Now we're also entering the last days of Ramadan. We are seeking the night of power. <coughs> what is to be learned from his prayer, his life, Hazrat Ali's life, and how do we apply it to our coming days? Brilliant connection. I think there is behind it a kind of a divine design that this commemoration happens to be in the last uh, ten days. And then I raised my eyebrows because yes, I never thought of that. And there is nothing without design in God in the last world. Exactly. So why is this not a design? It is. Why do we assume this is a coincidence? It's True. not a coincidence. It's a design, of course. Very well said, sir. So um, one of the ways, perhaps, uh, I, I like your phrase, seeking. I believe that once again there is enormous wisdom in the fact that the Shabbat Qadr has been indicated as one of the odd nights of the last ten days. And it is left to each individual believer to seek it. Uski talash. That itself shows the quality of your yearning and the quality of your seeking. For, I, yes, of course, popularly we fix on a date and we offer all our prayers on that date. We are busy people. We have so many other things to do. But those who genuinely seek it, they find it. And those who find it then are able to have in that one night of uh, one night of worship, uh, a thousand months of worship, and all the months of barakat there on Shabbat. But to take your point at a at a, a different uh, way, I think there is enormous wisdom in the fact that the last ten days and the odd nights of that is important. The point is that you are supposed to have fasted the first twenty days. Mm-hmm. Uh, something we miss. It is not that your Shabbat Qadr begins on the 20th of Ramzan by the calendar, but by the 20th fast having started from the first. You see, again, psychology tells us, cognitive psychology tells us, that the human nervous system takes 21 days to acclimatize itself to a new set of habits. True. So, bang on, 21st day, 
your entire structure of food and sleep is gone. You need a brand new system. It's it's all gone. That it whatever it took eleven months to establish is is wiped out. You are sleeping at odd times and you are wake, waking up at all. You are eating at odd times. All odd. And that, acha. By the way, if you go a little bit deeper, food and sleep are the two major things that connect us to earth. when you're sleeping you're on the bed right does yes. you're on the earth and food is your relationship to the vegetables and everything yeah. it's such an amazing thing these are the two things that connect you to earth so ramadan comes and breaks these two connections okay so you've been enlightened you mean <laughs> and the gravity has the been gravity <laughs> exactly in that state you have to seek the night in that state your worship is to achieve that kind of lightness and that kind of connection and that kind of love and yearning out of which you then are given the grace saying this was the shabe qadar and your prayers have been accepted those who and, have and, and also it, and also if we were given a night that would signify that in life we could have a shortcut to success we have to work we have to work and we have to we have to have a bit of blind effort we do not know where the results are we have to make those efforts correct sir so what do we learn from uh, this this event and what is to be learned for the coming days the end of ramadan uh, again self actualization very much you need to understand yourself self discipline yourself and very rightly said that uh, what is proven scientifically that at a certain stage there is a cycle which completes and which wipes out the earlier habits your earlier um way of living is changed so with that cleanliness you enter into a phase where you more closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the special blessings that we that are being awarded in these nights uh susceptibility to that uh say that uh, blessings become so close that uh, it happens that uh, it can happen very quickly and you can easily uh, attain the levels that would not have been attained easily uh, like i said that blessings in these nights are equal or more than the prayers and the of thousand months so that is what is the significance that if you clean yourself and you repent with what of the wrong doings and then you turn towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you get connected and you leave this material life aside and you think of the hereafter more so at that point of time your state of uh, connection with allah subhanahu wa taala becomes very strong very strong and that helps you again because this whole uh, spirituality has an impact on your personality and this is going to move you in that similar direction where which we, what you have prepared for in these 30 days when you say you prepare for if I, if i if i act and pretend to be a real muslim and i have had 20 days of true fasting true roza not even fasting is the wrong word uh, roza then i have overcome my bad habits i have overcome breaking of laws out of fun i have overcome speaking ill i have overcome ill thoughts i have overcome the lust for food for binging i have overcome the lust for it. more than ordinary sleep i have overcome all the worldly issues and now i enter with hasat ali's witness and now i enter the last phase where i am lighter of my bad habits i am lighter of my sins i am lighter of my or whatever rituals i was lost in for the month and now i come into prayer so tell me and teach me and help me understand what are the disciplines what are the methods what am i to do what are the stages as mufti sahib and i were talking earlier i can't just go to god and say give me food give me wealth give me. <laughs> though i have a long list of ill deeds yeah so what is the the what am i what's the word i'm looking for what's the what's the decorum what's the methodology where i need to start communicating with god now wow uh, by the way 
you are summarizing extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm okay. surprised at 20 years now, uh, I'll give it to you. No, 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 uh, mashallah, you're, you're going fine. Um, there's a short phrase in the Quran which goes, Unto your Lord is the infinite limit. Rabbil Muntaha. Yeah, there is, there is one limit unto. So what, what we are now talking about is a kind of an enrichment, a kind of a depth. And certainly, your, your question is on, on the Quran. Okay. When you, the way you've described it, it seems as if these things are done once and they are like over, but that is not how it works. These are cycles. So, at the level of, say, the physical body, some of the restraints of impulses and other things have been achieved. It is then that I realize uh, humanity, all human beings, are mm. four degrees of structure, uh, using the word structure. There's the jism, there's the nafs, there's the kalb, there's the roar. These four, if you like, levels of being. So what you have described are the two levels where the, the nafs and the jism have been put into some sort of... The body, but how would you describe what's the, the word self. nafs? The self. the self. The body and the self are taken. Body and self. Now you are into the kalb and the... Spirit. Kalb would be the... The heart. The heart. Okay. But the word heart used in the in the spiritual language of, of Islam is is a very uh, is a very huge and big concept. It isn't just the physical heart. That it is. is. It is uh, from what I'm able to understand from my teachers. It's, it takes a very long time to get this part through. Kalp yeah. is that in me which recognizes the truth from the false. The right from the wrong. The right from the wrong. The khair from the shar. The haq from the batil. The, 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 uh, tamiz khush or na khush is a very good phrase. Kalb is that in me which recognizes. So the purification of the heart as a stage would be the perfect record to, uh, perhaps one of the disciplines that again I try to follow. Uh, verse 8 of Surah Ali Imran. Rabbana la tozik. Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us. There lies the crunch. Uh, we know what to do. And it's quite perfectly tonight. We know what to do. Only we can't seem to get up and do it. We know what we should ah, do. Okay. <laughs> That's not me. I don't know what to do. I've got the idea. Exactly. And yet my heart and is yet. not... Into so, it. Ah. so all our t- save us, save us from that. So this then would be the the decorum where the heart would be disciplined. The nafs and the jism have been put into mm-hmm. some uh, stay, you know, stay. <laughs> now, so this then would be wahab lana mil and grant us from your mercy. Inna kamtal wahab, you are the grantor of infinite. So how beautiful. So closing notes. Yes. Uh, that is, I think, so. Uh, again, there is a connection of the material with the sound. Kalb and Kalib, they are very much connected. And as said, that initially the cleansing is done apparently. And the ultimate is that the soul is clean and it has been purified with all the evil and the vices. And But it's a human instinct. Again, if you ponder on the verse quoted by uh, it's a natural instinct that you will fall back. That would happen. You would go off track. That is something natural. That is something human. Like the Prophet said that uh, I repent hundred times a day. Although we assume that a Prophet cannot commit any wrong, but the message he's passing on that there would be instances, there would be times when you would go off track, despite of knowledge. But, but he is to come back. Come back. You have to come back. You have to be on the track again. And that is the beauty. That is what is uh, acceptable and that is what is desired by the creatures. They should act in that way. Very well. Done. That goes much. For me, perhaps every year in the month of Ramzan, uh, one moment is, Ramzan is a moment of silence. 
Yeah. It is also how a take off, how silence, how some of the yakking, some of the the, the noise, the noise, cacophony within and without. Some of that is stilled, and the purpose of that stilling is as if be silent, so that something can be said to you. So something can be said to you. The finest metaphor of that is the Quran itself. It is the silence of the Prophet's heart which begins the revelation in the month of Ramzan. Incidentally, the word Ramzan, the names of Islamic months, only one is named in the Quran, Ramzan. And the reference to that is Surah Bakra, where Ramzan and the Quran are mentioned in the same sentence. So, the point then is, let us cultivate the silence of the soul, so that some divine message, something of worth worth doing, a project worthy of our side may be communicated to us, so that beyond each day we then plunge into that noble venture, which we have achieved during these ten. Thank you, both of you. I'd like to just add a few words, though not much needs to be said after these ten minutes. Spoken, but Basak said silence. I would take it a little further. Stillness, calm. We as Muslims need to start speaking softly, gently, politely, nicely. The loud, shrill that we hear coming out of our throats has to be controlled. Um, we will be doing a lot of praying, inshallah, for ourselves and for others, for those we love. But my humble request, remember everyone within your good wishes. You can't pray for people you don't know. Maybe you can't. But you can remember the world in your good wishes. And good wishes for those who are like you. And good wishes for those who are not like you. For those who are not like you, wish them well. Wish them that they may find the right way. And those who have the way, wish them that they may be able to walk on that way. Be steadfast on that way. Don't damn or condemn those you don't agree with. Wish them better. Wish them that they know better. And wish that we know better. So my, my humble request, please wish everyone well. We don't have to pray for anyone, but let's wish them well. Remember each other in our good wishes. If you can't do anything for each other, at least smile at each other. Be polite. Be gentle. Let the world know what true Muslims and true moments are like. We are not loud, shrill people who damn or condemn the world. We are not the ones who cut each other's throats. We are not the ones who break each other's hearts. We are the people who love deeply, who care for the universe, who care for the world, who care for God's creation. Let's show the world who we really are. Until next time.